Praise the Lord. Let's look at what the Bible says. As a matter of fact, the title of our message uh, it will be Faith for the Unknown. Faith for the Unknown. Text is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 through 18. The Bible declares, For our, our light afflictions, which are but for a moment, is working for us far more exceedingly eternal weight of glory. Well, we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You may be seated. We had a tremendous time of the first service. And um, the second service, I pray that it will be also a blessing to you. We're going to do the offering at the end uh, for, for the sake of time. But I want to just share with you uh, something that is very special to me. Faith is something that has carried me through the dark moments of my life. Uh, when I got saved, I think uh, shortly after that, my dad, went, my dad went on to be with Jesus. Probably about four and a half years after I got saved, 1979, you know, I went a couple of days before Christmas. I went into the living room, and my dad was gone. I knew that he was gone. Just one look at him, I knew he was gone. And uh, pr I saw him alive about uh, 40 minutes prior to that. But I went to go to the den, and I, I, I saw my, my, my dad was gone. God prepared me for that. I always feared death, and I feel, you know, the, on the other side of death, especially family members. And I often told the Lord, as I, and wished myself, you know, God, before you take uh, you take my mom, my dad, or my brothers, please take me, because I don't know if I can bear the pain, you know, of not having them. That death was final. But nevertheless, God saw me through the death of my father. Then I was ministering in Africa, West Africa, and I came from West Africa on one of my trips, and they said, your mom is not doing well. She's in the hospital. I went literally from the plane straight to the to the to the hospital and she lived about two days and then she was gone very 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 dark moments of my life but faith allowed me to to move forward without going back to drugs without going back to alcohol without going back to you know losing my my senses you know um mary and i lost two kids you know before they were born uh, to some people it's enough to backslide get mad at god to us, it was a challenge to get close to God, you know. So God saw me, saw us through to, to uh, uh, losing the two babies before they were born. Then I had two brothers. One of my favorite brothers. What well, both of them, you know, were, you know, were very good brothers. But you know, time came where the fall came, and you know, uh, my brother was crossing the street, uh, Jose, and he died. You know. Uh, Somebody ran over him. And then my other brother, you know, two days before, I mean, two weeks before he died, called me. He's the one that disowned me for 19 years. And he says, I don't have the strength to fight, fight against you what you believe. And he disowned me because I became a Christian. Um, so he says, I don't have the strength to, to, to fight you anymore. I said, so if you don't have the strength, well, let me introduce you to Jesus. And he received Jesus Christ. Both of my brothers are in heaven right now. My father's in heaven. My mom is in heaven. Amen. But there's a lot of unknowns on the other side. And so I feel that as we approach the, the end of 2018 and the beginning of 2019, there's going to be a, a lot of unknowns. Not even the other side is going to be Disneyland. You know, so uh, because there's so many things that are happening in this world, so many just... Uncertainties, earthquakes, calamities, tsunamis, uh, people getting shot even in their own church and, you know, just concerts. And, you know, you see, like, where can you go where you're safe? You know, if you go to the Midwest, there's, there's floods. If you go to the East Coast, there's fires. And, you know, there's a whole lot of things. And now we have muds, you know, mud, mud slides. So I just feel that I got to, you know, we, God wants us to be strong to face, you know, whatever is, whatever the future holds. And God wants you to know that on the other side, you know, of our tomorrow, God is waiting for us there. 
you know, God is like a catcher. God is like, you're my son. I'm here for you. Amen. No matter what the devil throws, I am here for you. I, and I'm bigger than the devil. I'm bigger than the trials. I'm bigger than sickness. I'm bigger than all the oppositions. Amen. So, like here, right here, Paul is speaking to people that have very acquainted with, with afflictions. So, Paul is taking time to say, you know, it says, for your light afflictions, which are for a moment. That is telling us that at the very time that the Corinthians was hearing this, many of them have already gone through experiences where maybe their father was, was uh, stoned to death because of his faith in Christ. Remember, we're talking about a few years after the death of Christ. And so persecution is real. Throwing people in the lion's den was real. Throwing people in arenas to be eaten by lions and, and beasts like that, was, that was real. That was a customary thing. Uh, Nero was to, you know, burn people at the stake just to light up his little, his, 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 you know, his evening walks. He used to light up Christians, set them on fire. So the, the knowledge of death and the concept of death and suffering was very real to the people in the early church. So when Paul you know, uh, receive uh, th- this word from God, he begins to share with them that, yes, we're going to suffer. Yes, we're going to go through things. He says, but all of the things that you're going to go through, it's just light affliction in the light of eternity. You're going to go through something, through something, but all of that is light. All of that is very small in the spectrum of eternity. Yes, you are going to go through some changes, but there's eternity that you're going to be able to see Jesus forever and ever. No more tears, no more pain. Everything you go through is light afflictions. And so he's preparing them in case their death was next. He's preparing them in case their stoning was next. He's, he's preparing them, in, you know, unless the cross was, was next for them. So... In the light of the Christians that have died for us, yes, so we can get the gospel. How many of you know that, you know, that our little headache, you know, it's nothing compared to what they went through? Our little pimple on the neck. Right? Our, 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 little, our little setbacks are, 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 are nothing compared to the things that other people have gone through. And so Paul is preparing that, you know, this is also relevant for us today because when I look at the congregation and I pray, you know, for a congregation, I also see that there are people that are going through very dark moments. You know, this morning we had Darla that was here this morning and, you know, cancer had returned, you know, for the second or third time. And so there's always the fear like, oh, is this the last time, you know, that I'm going to get cancer? Is this the time that, you know, God is going to graduate to, to, the next, to the next life? So there is a concern. You know, we have Pastor Pete on the back that, you know, just uh, a year ago, some, you know, he would stand up and, and lead us in communion and, 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 and you know, he, he would minister, preach, and would have his own Bible study, but now he's restricted, you know, to a wheelchair, you know. But, but it's a light moment. This morning we had little, oh, Willie's on the back still. Willie, you just, you can't get enough of Jesus. We, 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 Willie was an usher in our church. You know, and a great usher, you know, and so he would be in Glendale before we got here. And full faculties, you know, full of God, loved God all his life. His, his father was, was, went through a home, you know, got well through a home. You know, then Willie got saved and he was doing fine. And all of a sudden, you know, just one day he lost his vision. He can't see no more. He's been blind for years and years and years. But he never misses church. He never misses church. And I, and, and I don't think that he complains. He says, what I'm going through is just a lot of affliction. As a matter of fact, in the spirit, I can see way more than the people that can really see. He says, what I'm going through is a lot of affliction. He never misses church. And he finds his way with a little cane, but he never misses church. Why? Because his reality of heaven is much bigger than the reality on earth. What he sees in the spirit is greater than what he sees in the natural Oh, he doesn't see in the natural. So the reason why I'm saying this, because we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds a future. If you know who holds a future, then you're going to have heart and you're going to have a conviction. No matter what the devil throws at me, I'm going to make it. 
No matter what the devil throws at me, I'm going to be okay. My family is going to be okay. My children are going to be okay. My marriage is going to be okay. My job is going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay because on the other side of faith, there's miracles. On the other side of faith, is God waiting. Amen? So anyways, let me give you some from few... Uh, you know, before I give you uh, theological scriptures in the area of uh, faith, you know, and the unknown, let me share with you, you know, an incident that happened, uh, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, a year or two years ago. We have a young man in our church, and I'm so proud of him. I want him to stand, you know, Brother Nico Hills. And uh, this is called, they call, they used to come Nico the Dragon. Most of you know that he was one of pioneers for MMA fighting. You know, a champion. He's been in 25 movies or more. And, and, and so one day, he came to me. He says, Pastor, you may be sitting. He says, Pastor, you know, they, they, they need to do a, a surgery because, you know, there could be some blood cloth, you know, that could probably potentially take my life. You know, so he says, can you come and, and, and pray for me? So, you know, pray for him. But then he went to seven in a, uh, the hospital in Venice, there in, in Glendale. And so we went. I went. Holly, his girlfriend, went with him. His parents, I met his parents, great parents. I met them there. And so I remember going there, and they're right, trying to, you know, they, they, he's in bed, and they're about to take him into the operating table. You know, so I stopped, and I said, it's one more time. Said, Let me pray for you again. And so we prayed. And, and so we pray, I prayed with faith. I pray like, God, this is going to go under the night. You know, God, you need to be with him, reassure him. You know, nervousness gone in Jesus' name and all that. So I prayed, and all of a sudden, you know, we went to the waiting room. Holly, his ex-girlfriend, his parents, I believe my wife was there. And all of a sudden, you know, I realized, I said, everything's going to be okay. Because I've been preaching on faith for one, one whole month. I remember preaching on faith, you know, faith to knock giants, faith to remove mountains, faith to, for the impossible. And, and so I was very prepared, you know, for praying with faith. And I prayed with faith. So we waiting, and we're expecting, you know, the doctor says, okay, you know, everything's fine. You know, the operation, you know, it's fine. You know, he's going to be okay. You know, we save his leg. Because at, at one point, I think they want to amputate the leg because it was very bad. Anyway, so what happened is that in the middle of our stalking with Holly and his parents, all of a sudden they said, Cold blue, cold blue, cold blue, cold blue. I mean, throughout the whole entire, you know, the speakers and the intercom, cold blue, cold blue, cold blue. And the minute, the minute I heard cold blue, the minute Holly, his ex girlfriend, heard cold blue, her blue eyes just went like, like in horror. Her face, and, and she went into shock. You know, she, she's shaking, and he, he's dead. He's dead. Cold blue, he's dead. He's dead. He didn't make it. He's dead. And I'm telling you this, that her fear came upon me, and I, you know, I'm thinking like, but we prayed. We prayed, and, but I couldn't deny the fact that they say, cold blue, he's dead. So all of a sudden, you know, uh, you know I was, my faith was paralyzed. And all of a sudden, you know, just the, the Holy Spirit brought, you know, coming like reaching to me and got those messages that I've been preaching on faith and got them back and said, I am bigger than death. I am bigger than all that. I am bigger than the situation. And as soon as men, you know, so somehow I muster up the, the word of God came before me to strengthen me. And the word of God says, look, everything is okay. And I, I couldn't believe that. He, he's dead. Cold blue is cold blue. It's cold blue. It's cold blue is dead. And so I say, I, so I, I, I shook up Holly. And I said, Holly, Holly. <laughs> Holly, everything's going to be okay. Remember, we've been preaching on faith. And we've been preaching that God is bigger than the situation. He's bigger than the wave. He's bigger than the earthquake. He's bigger than the fire. He's bigger than death. He's going to be okay. Again, are you sure? He's gonna, I say, he's going to be okay. I told you. We pray for him. Then we pray for him. He says, yeah, everything's be okay. And, you know, she calmed down a little bit. And my, the question inside of my mind, is he really going to be okay? What, what if they come? He's dead. And now what's going to happen? So I was saying, God, please, God, please, let it be okay. 
God, please let it be okay. See, God had to prepare me for one whole month preaching to prepare me for the moment. For that moment where he's going to say he's dead. And all of a sudden, you know, the doctor, they came. And it says, we lost him. But we gained him back. We lost him, but he came back to life. We don't know how it happened. But he came back to life. Come on, somebody. God is real. We don't know who holds the future. We don't know what the huge future holds, but we know with faith. Get us ready for the unknown. We know that God holds the future. On the other side of our doubt is God. On the other side of our situation is God. On the other side of cancer is God. On the other side of whatever demons, there's angels. God is bigger than the opposition of the enemy. And so it, it was, it, and see, this is what his leg looked like. And actually, if you can see it, there's a, there was a demon there. You know, uh, you know but God, God removed it. You know, stand up one more time. Stand up. Later on, I'm going to have you in a little testimony. As a matter of fact, do we have a, you know, give me that thing. Because I, I, want, I want him to share a little bit because it's not like, I'm not, you know, I mean, I'm so grateful for, a we have a dream church. We have, we have like tremendous miracles of people. You know, the pastor Pete actually died and came back to life also. I mean, I, I, I happen to be a part of a team of a church where people died and they, they come back to life. Come on, somebody like <laughs> The Lazarus Church. We need to call it the Lazarus Church. Come on, somebody. We don't manufacture this stuff. Tell us what happened from you. We got about two minutes. Go ahead. Amen, amen. In and out of season, right? This morning, I wasn't going to get up and come to church. I just want to be real transparent. I was tired and evangelizing. Sometimes we get tired. And I said, Lord, I'm getting convicted. I wanted to stay and eat eggs or huevos, you know, and watch football. I'm just being real. Come on, somebody. And I said, Lord, I need a sign if you really want me to go. I never thought Pastor Augie was going to call me right after I prayed. So you got to come to the church. Just being real. But I was in the men's home praying and getting broken and getting rebuked and doing all those things. And then Leo looked at me, and he said, you need to go to the hospital. So I went to the hospital. Anything to get out of the home. I'm just kidding. I went to the hospital. And then they told me, hey, you know what? Uh, we really can't operate on you because you don't have any insurance. And God moved. And then pastor came when I was on the stretcher right before they're going to wheel me in. And he prayed for me. And so many people were praying for me, and, and thank you so much. Your prayers are powerful. Come on, come on, come on now. And I looked at Pastor. I must have been a little insane because I said, you know what, Pastor? If I can make it out of this, I'm coming back to the home because I gave my word. I still had another month to go. When they put me inside of that hospital room I remember they put the thing on my face and at that time I was in the most peace I've ever been in my life because I knew it wasn't me anymore in control I knew that it was not me anymore that it was over or I was going to continue to live and I just remember when they put that on my face they tell you to count down to 10 but all I could see was Jesus on the cross with arm to the right an arm to the left. And I said to him, I said, Lord, if you want to take me, I'm ready to go. But if y'all don't want to leave me, I'm ready to go to work. And he left me. And I'm so, so thankful. Because we got a lot of work to do. And God bless you. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Somebody stand up and give God praise. Come on. Give God about 30 seconds of praise. He's a great God. He's an awesome God. He's the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Woo! If I didn't have a church, I'd make this my church. 
At least if I die, I have a little chance to, to come back to life. Amen. Listen, we don't manufacture this stuff. He went through, he really went through the men's home. You know, and you know what, when he got out, I really want, because his parents, and they love him. They're crawl little people, you know, and, and I said, you know, you can go home. You don't have to finish the home. You know, you, you can go home. You know, get better. Oh, no, I'll give you, I'll give God my word. I'll give you my word. He says, I'm going back to the home, you know. So he feet, leg go messed up and all that. He went right back to the home. That's how you know they got Cora. That's how they know they got conviction. That's how I, that I knew that at that particular time, God can do anything with his life because now he's moldable. No longer what he wanted. In the past is what he wanted. I said, you know, when you stop doing what you want, let God do what he wants to do in your life until then, you know, you, you're going to struggle and you're going to bump into things and nothing's going to work out for you. But you allow God to finish what you started. He stayed in the home. He wanted to go home, but he stayed. His conviction allowed him to stay in the home. And now he travels all over the United States preaching in every institution, in high schools, in colleges, in every kind of church. God has opened the doors for him. He's even a book writer. He comes on TV, TVN. He comes in, you know. Old Council Radio, and he always blasts. He always gives a good uh, plug for Victory Hours Eagle Rock and the men's home, right? Come on, give God a go know the good hill praise. So I say that, tell, tell, you, tell your loved ones, man, let's go to a church, man, where we just don't have just good music, good singers, but God shows up. Miracles happen. Miracles, miracles. Your faith is going to be... Test it, but God is going to give you faith, you know, to have the victory in your life. Let me give you a couple of stories here real quickly in regards to faith for the unknown. We have a story, the story of one Daniel in the Old Testament. Daniel had been in the, in the he's part of the people that, that, were, that were taken from Jerusalem in captivity back to Babylon. And, you know, there, so there he is in captivity in Babylon. And, and so Daniel has ascended to a high place, you know, uh, before the king. And, and so he, his customary thing is to pray, pray. He must have been, belonged to a victory hour back in the Old Testament. He would just pray, pray, pray. So he was, he, he was known for praying in the morning, at noon, and at night. And he would open the windows, you know. So, so he was not ashamed. Well, everybody was praising and, and praising Cyrus and, pray, and, 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 and praying to their God. He was praying to the God of Israel, Yahweh, Yeshua HaMashiach. He was praying to Jehovah. Yeah, and, so, and so he, so there's, there's some friends of the king that came and, and, and brought a, you know, uh, they, 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 they plan to kill Daniel legally. So what they, what they, they came to appeal to the ego of the king, and they said, um, you know, can we, King Darius, can we uh, make a decree that everybody in this kingdom should not pray to any of the gods, only you, for 30 days? And so they, they, but their intentions was to kill, to kill David because they knew that David never stopped praying. And so, oh, oh, Daniel. And so anyways, it appealed to him. He says, that's a good idea, you know, for people to pray to me. Every Caesar was, con king, con, uh, every king and Caesar was considered a king back in the day. So anyways, you know, so that the, the decree went out. And, and, and in the culture, when the decree went out, they can't take it back. It was an ethical principle. They can't take it back. So they found David praying, even during that 30 days of the decree. And so they came to Darius and said, Darius, you right-hand man, the man that you promoted, the Jewish guy, the Hebrew guy, he's still praying to his God. He's not praying to you. He's praying to his God. He violated by that. He needs to die. And so with a broken heart, Cyrus, because Daniel was very close to Cyrus. And Cyrus loved Daniel. 
with a broken heart, he had to get his guards to say, you know what, we have to fulfill, you know, this, this decree. He has to die. So there was a, a den of lions. And so they threw him into the lion's den. Hungry lions. And so as they threw him in there, you know, you, know, you can read between the lines, you know, that, that was, he, loved, he loved Daniel. And all night long, he probably couldn't sleep, you know. And so what happened is that, that in the morning, you know, he, Darius, they ran, he ran towards the den just to see if maybe God's, you know, God, the God of Daniel has saved his, you know, his, his servant. And see, so he says, Daniel, are you there? And Daniel responded alive in the middle of all these lions. They say, yes. Yes, King Cyrus, I'm still alive. My God was greater than these lions. My God had sent an angel to shut the mouth of the lions. In the middle of all this, the lions broke him up fast. Don't that now? Imagine that. So, so, so he became alive. And the fury of Cyrus was so great against the people that accused him, that the, the, the comprise or, or, or they, they planned to kill Daniel. He got a hold of all of them, their wives and their children, and they threw him to the lion's den. And all of them got devoured by lions. See, nobody can mock God. Nobody can mock your God. Yes, the devil can bring cancer, but God can bring a healing. Yes, the devil can bring a demon, but God can bring angels. Yes, the devil can show up in different ways, but God is always bigger than the enemy. I say God is bigger than the accident. God is bigger than divorce. God is bigger than rebellion. God is bigger than sin. He is your God. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And you need to understand that he really loves you. Some of us would think, like, if I act good, God loves me. If I don't act good, then God don't love me. No, you're wrong. God loves you whether you're good or bad. God loves you. He died for you. The Bible says while we, while we were in a sin, God still loved us. And he died for all of us. God loves you. God really loves you. But, man, I'm not worthy. God still loves you. But I messed up last night. God still loves you. But, man, I'm the biggest sinner, Victory Average. You're wrong. I am. God still loves us. God still loves you. God still loves me. Are you, man, I feel like preach. I feel the power of God in this place. God loves you. Hey, man, look at me. Let me give you another one. There was uh, in 2 Kings, and I'm going to try to close this, you know, because we have 150 bikers that are coming in. In just a little while, they're going to be outside. They're going to give every, all the kids, they're going to give two or three toys free. Man, two, two big trucks are coming full of gifts for our children. Amen? So anyways, there was four leopards in, the, in, the, in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3 to 20. I don't have time to read the whole thing, but let me just paraphrase it. Verse 3, the Bible says, now there were four leopards, men... Men are the entrance of the gates. And they say one to another, why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we will also die. But one of them, they say one to another, now therefore come, let us surrender to the armies of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, we shall only die. I love their attitude. We shall only die. We're going to die anyways. Let's go ahead and die trying to live. Let's, 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 let's swing. If we're going to get hit, let's swing. You know what's worse than a chicken? is somebody that gets in a fight that never swings. That is worse than any. Uh, you know, if, if I'm going to be involved in something, I want somebody to swing right next to me. Like my wife. She swings. In fact, she, she wakes up swinging karate, Bruce Lee. And, you know, I had to move out of the way. I said, hey, sister, I'm, 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 I'm on your side. Devil, you're a liar. You can't have my grandkids. You can't have my children. You can't have my husband. You cannot have our church. She is a, she's a fighter. She's a warrior. Amen. So, but that's what happened to these this four lepers. They say, you know, there's a famine you know, so, so the Bible says, let's get up and let's go there. 
it, it, maybe they keep us alive. But if they kill us, it's still going to be in a, it's not going to be in the worse than here. We're still going to die here. Let's go ahead and die trying to live. So they went in there, and the Bible says that your God, say, say, say your God. Say my God. That you God calls a noise of thousands of chariots and horses, and they're coming in. There was no horses. There was no chariots, only the sound. And the Bible says the Syrians, they heard the noise, and they heard, they said this one to another. The Israelites have hired Egypt to attack us and kill us. They hired the Hittites to come and attack us. And we're going to die. Let's leave. And the Bible says that they left the gold and the silver and all the food there and they fled. And on the way as they're fleeing, they left the garments and also their swords on the way. So when the four lepers came into the whole camp of the Syrians, guess what? There was mojos, there was chicken, there was pizza. Pollo loco. There was all this food. Plus all the gold and silver was there. And they took all of that. You know that God sometimes, you know, God does that. You know that you should have been dead. You know, but God told the, God told the bullet not to hit your head. You know, that, that, you know that, that knife that was striked for, you know, for your heart vital organ. You know, God, God diverted. There was an angel there. God sent an angel. He says, I don't want him dead. You know, just, you know, you know the accident should have taken you out. You know that, you know that divorce should have caused you to commit suicide. But God sent angels to strengthen you. The faith of God is inside of you. Say, no, I don't care. There's life after divorce. There's life after sickness. There's life after operation. There's life after death. Oh, my God, God. Praise the Lord. Listen, you know, they're, they're faith for the unknown. Everybody's going to have an unknown thing. Every one of us. Just like David here, what he had an unknown. We didn't know he was worshiping God one day, and all of a sudden, boom, go to the hospital, and now he's dying, you know, getting to, ready to die. You know, so all of us have these moments. You know, Pastor Pete, he, he, he started the church in, in San Gabriel. Then he went to start a church in, in Chicago. Then he came back and became the greatest disciple of our church, like Ezra. And then, you know, he's, all of a sudden, you know, he's in a wheelchair right there. Give us, are you there? Look at him. Hey, come on, somebody. Come, come on, somebody. Give God praise. Give God honor. He's a great God. The devil's not greater. God. The wheelchair is now greater than God. Woo, man. Come on, give God praise. Worship and come. So you got to get excited. As long as God, listen, God will never die. Be seated. God will never die. God, I say God will never die. God is an eternal God. An eternal God. And whatever you go through, it's only for a moment. It's only for a little season. Oh, God Almighty. God Almighty. Everything was right. One morning here, everything was right. And one of my intercessors that lost me a lot called me. My husband is vomiting blood. And that same morning, by the time I showed up, he was already dead. And that was Terry, right? There. Stand up, Terry. Stand up, yeah. Everybody knows Steve. He's done like 32 years in prison. He came back. He gave his life to the Lord. He helped us build the, the, the Americana. Everything was fine. Everything was fine. Everything was fine. But on the other side of the next moment, the next day was the unknown. She called me that morning. Says, man, something's happening to Steve. And I showed up, and there was blood everywhere. And, 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 and I'm like, he's dead. I'm thinking, oh, God. This is her husband. She's loyal. She was, both of them were loyal to the church. But did she go back to drinking? Did she go back to the spoon? Did she go back to that stuff? She could get mad at God. Amen. I served you. I paid tithes and offerings. I did all of that. And look what you did. This is how you paid me? No. See, her faith prepared her, you know, for, for, for Steve to be gone. 
her faith. And she had this stubborn faith like her mom. You know, like no matter what, man. See, her mom, Becky, is the kind of person that if the devil gets a little bit of mat, not a lot, just a little bit of mat, her chongos will go up. She would take out, she would take out earrings. She would wipe her, you know, like the lipstick, and she would right away. Devil, you want, you want a piece of me? And, and Terry inherited a little bit of that because Steve was gone, and the next Sunday she was here. And the following Sunday, she was still here. And the following Sunday, she's still here. And she never misses. I say she never misses. And just to get the devil, and just to slap the devil, God gave her another husband that is a loving husband. Stand up, my brother Robert. God, you're not listening to me. It's God, if they never miss church. They love God. Oh, but it was a painful situation. Did she out there, you know, start, you know, throwing herself over, you know, over, over the, the Facebook? I'm available now. <laughs> Get in line, everybody. She remained holy. She stayed holy. She stayed trusting God. And, you know, all of a sudden, you know, while she was right here, God was making a man of God in another church. Was it new? prayer chapel or something like that it was a man of God a giver a tither a, 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 you know a, a soldier of God on the other church like 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 far away from here like a thousand churches between us but she re- did she go out there and start visiting all the churches to say that yeah, maybe the, the grass is greener on the other no 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 she stayed here she stayed faithful to God it's all of a sudden man this man I don't know how they got hooked up. But all of a sudden, these men started coming. And, it, and it, ooh, he came again. Then, ooh, came again again. And I'm thinking, like, oh, God, you know. You know, it, it, it's all of a sudden, you know, there was a kingship going on there. And before you know, I married them. I mean, you know what, what puzzled me? That usually a man follows the, the women follows the men. But she had, when, when it came to, like, whose church are they going to live she, 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 be, she threw a Becky on him. And she, she took out her little, you know, when she says, okay, we're church. Oh, she, she just took out, you know. It says, okay, I'm not going to your church. It says, if you want me, you need to come to Victory Out. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You are not. You're not. Get excited for Jesus. When I preach good and when I don't preach so good, you gotta be loyal. Man, what a blessing. She could have got stuck with some monster in Facebook. He's a man of God. He loves her, man. For him to listen, for him to leave his church, he was serving his church like 12 years. He was a worker. But what a blessing when I went and married him in the church. And the pastor says, man, we love Robert, but he, we know that he's going to go to a good church. God bless you, pastor. If you look at pastor, God bless you. Love you. Thank you so much. We're going to treat him good. I finish. I, I, I have some more, but I'm not going to do this. Because the bikes are coming. Oh, I can tell you about Esther, but I'm not going to tell you. But I will finish with this. Everybody, please stand up. Paul declared, get ready for the unknown. Get your faith ready for the unknown. And if anybody suffered for the gospel, was Paul. But at the end, listen, in the middle of all the circumstances, the middle, he got stoned. He got stoned. He got shipwrecked. He got whipped like Jesus 39 times. His back, you could see his bones. Three times they did that to Paul. In the middle of all that, this is what he said. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 through 10. But we are in the, we have in this in this treasure in earthen earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power of God be in us. We are hard pressed, but on every side, 
but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in our body the dying of our Lord Jesus Christ. That the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our lives. The more we suffer, the more God manifests His presence upon your life. The more you suffer, the more you suffer, the more God's character moves inside of your life. And let's say, God, God wants you to know that He's got you back. Do not despair. Don't despair. Don't fight with a feast. Don't fight with a knife. Don't fight with a sword. Your own sword. The Bible says that he who fights with the sword will die by the sword by fighting on your knees. You can do much more on your knees than you can do on your feet. You can go faster and farther on your knees than you can go on your feet. Trust God. If, if, if the devil, like, like, like daughter, they told her that you, you have cancer. This is the third time. And she steps in right into the scene and says, man... I am ready. God wants to take me. I'm ready. But if not, I'm ready to preach the gospel again. Just like Nico Hills, you know. Light afflictions. What do you go through? In the light of Willie, blind. In the light of Pastor Pete, restricted to a wheelchair. In the light of Darla, dying of, you know, I mean, she, it looks like, you know, that, that the doctor says, man, you know, this is, this is bad. What you go through is light compared to all, that, all this stuff. That, that we see around us. But no matter how small it is, if it's a concern to you, God loves you, God has your back. God has your back. There's life on the other side of divorce. There's life on the other side of cancer. There's life on the other side of whatever you, you put there. There's life. God loves you. God really, really loves you. Amen. I'm going to make a comment, then I'm going to pray. I think it was yesterday we came to pray. And I, I, I always try to find a place by myself because I, like I like to break in the presence of God. And so I decided to pray in that corner. And all, all, all that came out of me, just I love you, tears. And then I love you, I love you, more tears. I love you, one hour. I love you, I love you. I almost emptied the little box. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I didn't ask him, God, we're going to sell more trees or more tithes and offerings or I want this and I want that. No, I just simply, I love you. And I knew that that was the residue of the seven day uh, water fast that I did a, a year before. That's, that God is placing my heart of God just to simply love him. I told that, I told my wife that this morning. She says, you know, all of our church needs to have that. That simply we just fall on our knees and just, God, I love you. I love, I'm so grateful. I just love you and love you in tears. And I just love you. Because we know that no matter what we go through, on the other side of our affliction, there's heaven for it ever and ever and ever. God loves you. God loves every single one of you. God loves your children. God loves your children. My grandson's still in the men's home. <laughs> Trying to get to work, Grandpa. Don't want men of you. I love you. I trust and I pray. If you're going through anything, God fix this message just for you. You know who you are. And if you want to come to the place where it says, God, you know I'm not blind. I must. I have to love you. I have my hands. I have my eyes. God, I'm not in a wheelchair. I love you, God. I'm not dying of cancer. I love you, God. I love you. For about three or four minutes, I'm going to ask you. I'm just, if you want to come and say, just God, I just love you. This is Christmas. This is, we celebrate his birthday. You want to come on his month of his birthday and say simply, I love you. Get me ready for whatever comes 2019. I want you to come from all over this place. Go ahead and just come. Those of you that are watching through the world, just want you to know that God has your back. God loves you. God really, really loves you. You can't do anything to make God look good.
that prayer. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we love you. We praise you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you spare lives, Lord God. That accident should have taken us out. The knife should have taken us out. That bullet should have taken us out. That sickness should have taken us out, but it didn't. And, and we are grateful forever. In the good times and bad times, we're married to you. We're going to be loyal no matter what. We're never going to serve the devil no more, God. We're going to love you, praise you. Even with our imperfections, we're going to love you and praise you, depend on the precious blood of Jesus to make us righteous. And you said that the praise of righteous people very much. And you said that you ordained the steps of righteous people, ordained it towards you, your kingdom, and your will in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. We thank you for tuning in to today's message. We hope you're inspired and envisioned by what was shared. For more information about our ministry, please visit us at voigrock.org.